Tell me about Peralta. Jacob Peralta is my best detective. He likes putting away bad guys and he loves solving puzzles. The only puzzle he hasn't solved is how to grow up. And while you're out, you can buy yourself a tie. Oh, actually, sir, I'm wearing a tie right now. Check it out. I was three minutes late. I'm sorry for doing one thing wrong. Oh, it's more than one thing. Let's start with the Kristoff murder. It was an amazing solve. I got him to confess in 20 minutes. You also mislabeled the evidence, so that confession is worthless if the sergeant hadn't caught your mistake. Here are three cases with sloppy paperwork. Here are two pictures. One is your locker. The other is a garbage dump in the Philippines. Can you tell which is which? That one's the dump. They're both your locker. God, I should have guessed that. He's good. You're going to have a superior officer babysitting you on every one of your cases. And when you show me that you can do your job, every part of your job perfectly, then I'll back off. You know where we keep the glitter? Just want to make sure this report for the captain is extra sparkly. What are you doing, Peralta? Look, if I have to do things his way, I'm going to do them my way. <laughs> OK, man. It was nice working with you. <laughs> Crime techs aren't done yet, but I'm 100% sure it's Whitman. Well, let's see what kind of physical evidence they turn up, and then we can talk arrest. Actually, hilarious story. So that is Dustin Whitman. You already arrested him with insufficient evidence. So I'm just going to grab a healthy breakfast. Are those gummy bears wrapped in a fruit roll-up? Breakfast burrito. Five years instead of 20. Oh, that's tough, but fair. I can see why you have such intense daddy stuff with him. Oh, yeah, the guy without a daddy is the one with daddy issues. Explain that logic. Here, Sarge, it's the rest of the money I owe you, 1,237 bucks. I thought you already drained your bank account. I sold my car. It's not a big deal. Oh my God, this is such a huge deal. <laughs> oh, I am so relieved you guys found me. Wait, how did you find me? He hadn't done anything super annoying to us for like five hours, so we knew something was wrong. Oh. It's very insulting, but dead on. We looked through those irritating selfies you sent us, and in the background of three of them was an ice cream truck. We ran the plates and put out an APB. I'm sorry we doubted anybody was sabotaging you. No, I'm the one who should apologize. For some reason, I have trouble believing people actually have my back. I don't know why. Probably my dad abandoning me. Maybe something I should work out in therapy, but who has an hour to spare once every two weeks, right? <laughs> Holy Moses, that is much too much money. Well, you spent twice that for Mr. Met to come to your birthday party. Yeah, and it was worth it. Mr. Met used my bathroom, number two. That's a memory I will cherish forever. Amy Santiago, I want to change mattresses for you. That's the best thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry I didn't do it sooner. I think I was just scared that you were going to realize you're way better than me. Like, you're Orangina and I'm Orange Soda. Are you kidding? You're Orangina? Ugh. Don't say that. Ah, oh, man. It stinks you got to watch him. It's really messing everything up. I mean, that came out wrong. I love that you have a son. It's not messing everything up. It's just messing up our ability to solve the case and have fun. Ah, you know what I mean. I'm a nice guy. I'm in the right. I'll just go myself. Bye, Nikolaj. Nikolaj. Yeah, whatever. I want to apologize. For what? Well, I kept talking about how I wanted everything to go back to normal, but if that actually happened, this little guy wouldn't be here. Or is he big? I don't know what size kids are supposed to be, or anything about kids, really. I think maybe that's part of the problem. It doesn't matter. I got a present for Nikolaj. Thanks, Jake. I can explain. Of course he can. My boy's got bunches of explunches. Hit him, Jake. I'm not ready to be back. You should suspend me. What? Look, when we arrested Richmond, and he said he didn't do it, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I mean, what if he was telling the truth? What if he was innocent and I was putting an innocent man in jail? It just feels a lot harder for me to put another human being in prison after experiencing it myself. When you demanded to be put back in the field, I worried that you were being flippant about your time in prison. I thought you would be reckless, but I was wrong. Prison has made you more cautious. Yeah, but what if I'm too cautious now? I mean, I used to see everything as black and white, and now it's looking real gray to me. I wish every cop had a voice in their head asking, what if he's innocent? You see it as a weakness, but it means you're growing. It makes you a better detective. Fresh air. Well, I don't say that a lot. There's one thing I still don't understand. Did you know you had the wrong murder weapon? Oh, excellent question, sir. Yes, 
I spotted the missing dental award when I first took the case. I asked around weeks ago. It turns out a cleaning lady knocked it over and shattered it. Then why did you run in there like that? Because in talking to you, I realized what Philip's worst fear actually was. That we would think he was just some dummy that got lucky. Right. He had planned the perfect crime, and it killed him when you said he was sloppy and impulsive. He needed us to know how smart he was. Right. Like someone else I know. Yep. Wait, have you never been to therapy? No, don't need it. Not even after the time your wife shot you? Nope. What about when you were held at gunpoint and had to write your own suicide note? Oh, that was crazy, I forgot about that. Or when you were falsely accused of bank robbery and went to prison? Was that a big deal? You joined a gang and tried meth! I don't want to be anyone's bitch. Look, it sounds like these things affected you more than they affected me. Maybe you should go to therapy. Fine, you want something real? I tried therapy, it only made things worse. Uh-huh, go on. Uh, when I was a kid, I was acting out at school, so they made me and my parents do family counseling. But instead of helping me with my problems, the stupid therapist just brought up all my parents' issues. And once it was all out in the open, they fought all the time and eventually got divorced and everything good in my life just went away. Interesting. So you actually blame yourself for your parents' divorce? No, I blame the therapy, which we only had to do because I, oh my God, I do blame myself. Heard you guys got that finance creep. Congratulations. Thanks. But there's nothing to congratulate me about. Amy's just upset because the historically entrenched patriarchy has created a culture of victim shaming that suppresses any power shift in our masculophallic system. Huh? I couldn't sleep last night, so I watched a documentary on Netflix about feminism. I love you. We both work way too much. Why bother having kids if you never get to spend time with them? I mean, I love my job and I know you love yours and I don't think it's fair for either of us to have to sacrifice that. You're in charge for the day. Oh boy, here comes the lecture. Be responsible, Jake. Don't do anything crazy or fun. There's no lecture. I trust you. Oh, but there always used to be a lecture. Yeah, well, you're not the same immature, rebellious kid you used to be. Didn't you and Amy just buy a family-friendly mid-sized sedan? In a rebellious color, champagne, which is an alcohol, and let's not forget, I wanted to have sex in your office just now. Yeah, to have a baby and become a father. Yeah, he turned it around on me. It's you wanna know why I really wanted that year of no paperwork? It's so if we did get pregnant, I would have more time to help with the baby. Oh, save your awe. I don't deserve it. I'm just some boring, responsible guy that's about to lose our car. You're still pretty irresponsible. You're just saying that because you're my wife. Are we going to be okay at this? I mean, this entire day felt like a warning from the universe. I almost missed the birth. We had our baby at the precinct. A firefighter touched our child. We washed him off. Yeah, but I'll always know. Babe, we talked about this. Everyone balances work and kids. Yeah, but everyone's not a cop. We came up together. We went to the academy together. We've had the exact same career. All we ever wanted was to be detectives. And yes, we've always known there were problems, but we would solve them together from the inside. So when you quit, yeah, it made me feel like you thought I was wrong for staying. I'm really sorry about everything. I was projecting my insecurities onto you and that was wrong. And I like to think I've done a lot of good as a detective and that I can continue to do that, but... Maybe I am part of the problem. Regardless, you're dealing with things in your own way and I get that it's not on you to make me feel okay about my choices. What you're doing is super important. I'll just scale back and let Charles run point on the Franzia case. No! None of us are scaling back. We can be good parents without sacrificing our careers. We just have to work as a team. You know what? Yes, you're right. We got this. All we need is each other. There's been a lice outbreak at daycare and they're closing for the next two days. What? No! We need so much more than each other! SWAT is on their way. We have to go to Franzia's now. This is our best chance at police reform! Franzia! Lieutenant Franzia! Reform, Boyle! Reform! Okay, enough! Charles is right. Jake has waited years for this. No, he can make the arrest without me. Without you, there is no presentation. I'll take Mac. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Hey, Charles, it's all so awesome, but I actually have to stop you because I gotta go. I have to feed this baby some mushed up avocado. Oh my God. What happened? Is Mac okay? <sighs> he just pulled himself up. What if I admit I made an error and apologize? He is speaking hypothetically. You'll notice he never used the S word and he never used the M word. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Holy <laughs> Let the record show that he didn't say anything specific. I arrested a man without a sufficient probable cause in a case I was removed from. He has no idea what he's talking about. I then followed my victim to his home. That's a good time for us to leave. In an act that can only be seen as police intimidation. La, 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 I take la, full la, responsibility la, la, for my mistake and I'm willing to say as much in a court of law. And what's more, I'm very, very sorry. And everyone's gonna be so shocked when they find out the big surprise that I'm leaving the 9-9.
What did you just say? That's what I want to do. But only if you agree. I don't understand. Well, for weeks we've been trying to figure out how you can do your new job and still have us be there for Mac as much as we want. And I really think this is it. Yeah, but we have other options. Yeah, but I think this is the best one. Look, you know I was scared about having kids because I didn't want to be like my dad. But if I do this, I have a chance to be the exact opposite. And I don't want Mac to ever feel the way I felt growing up. And I get that. I really do. But you love being a detective. I know. It's all I ever wanted to be. Until now. On my first day here, I asked Jeffers to tell me about everyone told me you were a great detective, but the one thing you couldn't figure out was how to grow up. Well, I think you finally figured it out. Well, thank you, sir. I couldn't have done it without you. Over the years, you've sometimes referred to me as uh, something of a father figure. Did I? I didn't realize that. But I want you to know, if I had had a son, and uh, he had turned out like you, I would be very proud of him. <laughs>